Hello, welcome to a special edition of the Glass Tire Top 5. Today we are counting down not top 5, but top 10 artists in Texas. We're doing this. Uh, we are on the campus of the University of Texas at Austin here. Yep. It's a beautiful day. Mm -hmm. Painful, painful cuts. This was gruesome. This was a gruesome process. Yeah. All four, uh, Christina and I and Brandon Zeck and Ariana Roche, the four of us, came together and spent a lot of time, hours and hours, hours and hours, hashing this out. And so our criteria. Okay, they're alive, mm -hmm. they live in Texas, mm -hmm. they've had some sort of exhibition presence in Texas, in Texas uh, over the last four years. Yeah. And young people. Yeah, if, they, if there wasn't enough of a track record, if we felt like they're just, we didn't, hadn't seen quite enough, um, we, we cut them out because we felt like people, we wanted to see a couple of bodies of work. We wanted to see a little bit of longevity. Uh, 10 years ago, this list would have been different. 10 years from now, it will be different again. Absolutely. So number 10 on our list is Ludwig Schwartz out of Dallas. Of course, Ludwig, he's, he's one of the smartest artists that I've known or worked with or seen, or I've watched him since the mid nineties. Yes. Making incredibly smart, funny, very dark work. He's conceptual. It's highly conceptual stuff. But hilarious. It can be very, hilarious. very funny and very dark. Um, I love his works on paper. His videos are great mm -hmm. and were, I think, uh, pretty pioneering in terms of their tone, mm -hmm. uh, the way they look, the way they feel, the punchlines. He, he presaged the the like viral video thing. Yeah, and the memes and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but he's he's also a painter. He's a good painter. He's an interesting painter. I'd say that. He's a very interesting painter. He's been making paintings since the, the mid-90s as well. Mm -hmm. uh, he's doing more painting now, and that's often what sh what's sort of anchors the shows that he's in at Conduit and elsewhere. Um, but, but it's a big, rich body of work, yeah. and we are just big fans of his. Number nine, basically the polar opposite of Ludwig Schwartz, maybe... <laughs> Uh, Hubbard and Bursar, Teresa Hubbard and Alexander Bursar, they teach here at UT. Mm -hmm. um, filmmakers primarily is, I think, how they're known, mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. I love their still photography. Yeah, you I do. really actually love it maybe more than the films. I love the films. I can really dive into those films and I, I will stick with them to the end. I find them hypnotic. They're very epic and sort of lyrical. and The way that they shoot them is beautiful. It's as impeccable as any great Hollywood film. And I think a very sensitive handling of the sort of regional subject matter. Um, they shoot it, in Texas a lot, and they're not from here. They're not from here, but their work has reach. It is a big body of work, and it's very, very good. Yeah, we're very happy to have them here. Number eight on our list is Trenton Doyle Hancock. He lives in Houston. Trent. Um, Trent. We call him Trent. <laughs> he's on the scene. He's a good one. He's a, he's a world builder is what he is. Um, you know, he's, he does... It's these, not just a world, it's a universe. He's now. built a universe <laughs> over the years, and it's been consistent because he started with a certain... You know, number of concerns that he's continued to build upon. Mm -hmm. um, digestion. Digestion. Things coming in and going out and what that means, allegorically and otherwise. <laughs> he comes out of that comic book's tradition and on the look of it, and you can see it still in his drawings very much so, but he has really transcended it, I think. Amazing show at the CAM, curated by Valerie Cassell Oliver of his drawings a couple of years ago. And that was just a, a stunning look into his body of work outside of the paintings and like fabrics wall sculptures that people might be more familiar with. Number seven on our list is Buster Graybill. Who? He's the outlier. Yeah. He's, he's the youngest. He's the upstart. He's in his 30s. And he's in his 30s. Yeah. So I really like the way Buster very humorously and satirically plays on the caricature of the southern white cracker redneck <laughs> in his work. Yeah. He is very aware of all of that and he's working within that but also definitely playing with it and making fun of it and sending it up. He works with catfish, he works with inner tubes, mm -hmm. he makes um, usually like site-specific installations I think but also videos. I think there's, there can be with some of his work a really good traditional or formal quality to his work as That's well. That's true, That's true. although he uses abject materials. Yeah, but, he, yeah. He, he does but he's in the very, it is smart and it is funny but they can also be quite beautiful and quite sort of muscular and um, very resolved. Mm -hmm. Number six is Hill Snyder, mm -hmm. the great Hill Snyder in San Antonio. Yeah. Long-haired, rangy Texas outlaw, He's an outlaw. musician, yeah. I mean, the hippie. And yet his work is so crisp and so precise. I will never forget the experience of his incredibly ambitious art pace project in 2005 called Book of the Dead. He drew you through these 
creepy rooms and through a um, maze, a sensory deprivation maze. You couldn't see or hear anything. You were feeling your way through it. And then you emerged through this vaginal-like opening into a 1970s American living room. And Hills is there in all white serving drinks. But he makes these very, very precise plex works. And now these, uh, in newer bodies of work, his surrealist drawings, um, which we will be featuring on Glass Tire soon that are a travelogue. It's a travelogue. Hills is the kind of Texan that I wish there were more of. Mm -hmm. He is a true iconoclast. Number five on our list is Otabanga Jones and Associates. It's an art collective out of Houston. Jamal Cyrus, Kenya Evans, Rob Pruitt, and um, Jabari Anderson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They had a seminal piece in 2004, which was an overturned police car in the basement of the Contemporary Arts Museum in Houston, from which, uh, from the police radio, the Watts riots, uh, the sound of it was playing. The sound of it was playing. I mean, you could make that piece t today and it would be just yeah. as relevant and powerful. And they were in the Whitney Union in 2006. Yeah, their work deals very directly and viscerally and pointedly uh, with issues of race. And it is sharp and political and really, really smart. Very influential. They're very influential as well. A lot, and you can see a new generation of artists coming up looking at these guys and looking at what they've accomplished. And um, each one of these guys has his own practice, but um, collectively, Uta Bengen Jones has been very important. Number four on our list is Celia Everly. She's our, our sleeper. She's our, our stealth, stealth bomb. Yeah, out of Ennis, Texas, which is up near DFW. She's, um, she's a master of materials. Mm -hmm. She masters any material she needs to in order to make the work that she has envisioned. Mm -hmm. um, often very beautiful, very beautifully made, very, very beautifully carved or stacked or cast or whatever it is she needs to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's quite political work. It has been for a long time, but moving into a lot of environmental and political and even just matters of the heart kind of politics, mm -hmm. uh, heartbreak. And, and we were saying like the priest in Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom, she sticks her hand into the heart of darkness and pulls out the beating, bloodied heart which is a beautiful object probably carved of alabaster probably. that you want to own. Yeah. Number three is Jim Purtle. Jim. Jim. Yeah. Houston artist. Um, came to prominence in the, in the 80s and 90s for his performance work. He had an alter ego named Stu Mulligan, and he did these outrageous endurance, grotesque performances where he would sing My Way and uh, eat a jar of mayonnaise or drink an entire big bottle of paste bacani sauce. And um, you really couldn't tear your eyes off of this thing, no matter how much you might have wanted to. He is, of course, the owner and founder of Notsuo, Houston spelled backwards, for those of you who don't know, which since the late 90s has been a meeting place, a uh, watering, hole. watering hole for the Houston art scene. It started out allegedly as a speakeasy in the early days, but since then they've hosted drag queens and noise bands and performance art. They still have young Houston performance artists uh, all the time. So he has really cultivated the scene. His current practice can be found on Facebook. Mostly. So uh, well, another thing we love about Jim is that he basically turned his back on the art world, figured out a way to make a living through his bar, mm -hmm. and said he was going to do his practice his own way. And he does. He makes work all the time. Every Number two on our list is Susie Rosemary, and also in Houston. She's got a, a sh currently a mini retrospective of her work up at CAM. It's beautiful. It's one of the better shows I've seen in Texas in a long time. She's a painter. She's rigor is the word that we associate yes, with her. Yes. Almost a machine like rigor and making these beautiful abstract paintings that are mind bogglingly complex. Yes, yes. I mean, she's obviously coming from patterns, uh, mathematical patterns, mm -hmm. of, but of Monday, everyday things. Like in the very early days of the 90s, she was looking at the way she would dial numbers, sequences of numbers on a phone. You, you mentioned the human endeavor. endeavor of what she is up to. It is truly inspirational. Right. So you can enjoy them on a superficial or surface level as just a, a, a formal painting. And then you, but when you get up to them, just to, just to take in the effort that went into them and the human behind them is kind of They're an amazing. remarkable pieces. Yeah. And number one is Rick Lowe. Of course, Rick Lowe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, people might say, oh, you picked him just because he just got the Genius Grant from the MacArthur Foundation. That's not why I picked him. Not true. No. He came to Houston in the 80s and I think pretty early on decided he wasn't going to make objects. He was going to start this thing, Project Row Houses. And he considers it, considers it his work. It is his work. It's a social sculpture. And you think about somebody um, 
so long ago. He founded it officially in 1993, but having the vision to see these shotgun houses, which were the most sort of disposable, worthless, you know, unvaluable bits of architecture lying around the city. And he elevated them, he put art in them, and he elevated the neighborhood, and um, both in the visual art program that they did and also the social work that they did in the neighborhood. Yeah. He has transformed that neighborhood. He was a pioneer of this type of work and these trends that are happening throughout the art world at this point. And it's incredibly successful. I mean, Project Row Houses as a work of art, if you want to call it that, is just this ongoing, evolving, successful, incredible thing that's changed de definitely the Texas landscape in terms of oh art. Oh my, you cannot imagine Houston without Rick Lowe. You cannot imagine Texas. What's your list? What's your list? What are we, who do we <laughs> leave off? We know who we left off, by the way. We do know. Thank you to all the Texas artists who do what you do. Thank you because so much. Uh, Last hour wouldn't exist without you.